At some point, he thinks, Marin should have been suspicious when Chat Noir appeared at his window in the middle of the night. Midnight visits were not unusual for them, but generally they were planned, and more often than not spent outside, unless weather otherwise made it difficult. There were a number of things he's come to expect from unplanned visits. Brief checks after Akuma, a rare random gift, or even a quick good night on the way home. What he had not expect, however, was for Chet Noir to drop down from his window the moment he opened it, and effectively pin him to his bed. <sighs> his words fade out into something between a squeak and a moan, as the soft glow of Chet's eyes meet his. He can vaguely make out the playful flick of her tail swishing back and forth as she offers a sheepish smile. Whoops. Her tail curls and falls, brushing over his legs as she tries to sit up. <laughs> I think I missed. I was aiming for the bed. Whoops. Morin repeats breathless. There are a number of things he wants to say after that, but Chet Noir is pulling away and he really doesn't want that. So without thinking, he acts. His weight is braised on one arm as he catches her cheek with his free hand. His fingers curl as his cheeks warm, and he tries to sputter out an excuse for his actions. It isn't as if they've never kissed before, but it's never been like this, and certainly never been in his bed. At least, not with the lights off. I, uh, I mean... He tries, and curses himself for being so weak. Two eyes, he really should just be accustomed to by now. They're partners after all, in several different ways. But even after all this time, Chet Noir has never lost the ability to make him weak with a glance. When her eyes are gleaming like this, You don't. He swallows and gives his head a firm shake to focus. You don't have to move. He feels her hair shift with the movement of her ears, perking, and her eyes widen just a fraction. It's a quite still moment, and for a second, neither of them moves. The soft tick of a clock somewhere under his bed is the only noise in the room, but it's enough to bring Marin back to himself, and he brushes his thumb just under Chet Noir's lower lip. A purr ripples in her chest and throat in response as she blinks. Careful and slow, when Marin returns the gesture, it's all the invitation she needs. Marin tries to sit up to meet her halfway, but barely lifts himself an inch before his mouth is occupied. His weight falls back on his elbows and he gasps. As the noise gets swallowed in another kiss, he feels a hand brush past his side and dip the mattress and the movement sends a small wave of heat through his stomach. Vaguely, he thinks he should probably be curious or at least concerned with why she's shown up without warning. But his thought process is somewhat stalled, and focusing on what is in front of him seems so much more important. He can't interrogate her now. He will later. For now, he's more worried about guiding her face back down to his and returning every kiss she gives him. As his hand slides up into her hair, he feels something creep along his leg. It starts at his knee and coils up slowly to make its way around his thigh. And while he's always assumed the tail was just a belt, he can't find a reason to care. All that matters is what she's doing with it and the tingling rush it sends through him. Every inch upward makes him dizzier and dizzier, and he knows his aim is very off by this point, judging by the amount of times he's kissed a jaw or a cheek instead of lips. Fortunately, Chat Noir seems to know exactly what she's doing, and exactly what it's doing to him, and has no issues with restraining her hold on the reins. The breath Marin doesn't release he's been holding comes out in a shaky sigh, as Chat Noir's lips occupy themselves with the line of his jaw, rather than his mouth. 
he swallows the audible gulp, not swaying her actions in the slightest. The question of why starts to form in the front of his mind, but it is quickly crushed by that of who cares. Her tail continues to spiral downward and brushes over his earlobe before plunging to his neck. His fingers dig into the mattress with a muted gasp as the same spot is kissed over and over before he feels something sharp break the pattern and he jerks with an unrestrained, unrestrained yelp as electricity races through his veins. He can feel his toes curl as he lets his head fall sideways, trying to open his neck because really he doesn't want her to stop. His face feels like it's on fire and he he barely manages to choke back another sound as lips reconnect with his neck, but it all comes crashing to a halt when he hears a knock on the door. Teeth come down on his neck a second time, and he barely swallows a moan. It's the shock, and he knows it, from the way her claws suddenly dig into his comforter, and it's all he can do to hold his sanity. In a quick, swift movement, Marin wraps an arm around Chat Noir's waist and throws his weight sideways. His other hand tugs on the blanket, wrapping them in soft fabric, and leaves his back to the door. He can hear the creak as it opens all the way and prays that somehow the soft green glow of her eyes isn't visible to whatever parent that might very well catch them in the act. All he can think is that he has no idea how he's going to explain why he's in bed with THE Chat Noir. When he already has a girlfriend and Oh god, her tail is still moving, and it's just run out of room to go up. A soft whine builds up in Marin's throat as Chat quickly thrusts her hand forward to cover his mouth. Her tail loosens and her gaze becomes apologetic, and Marin shuts his eyes and wills himself to calm down. He can hear the soft pad of footsteps as his parent, his father, he suspects, he always walked softer, drawn closer to the stairs that lead up to his bed. For several horrifying moments, all is completely still in the room. No one moves, and Marin barely dares to allow himself to breathe. But he has to look asleep. Sleeping people breathe, and without the rise and fall of his blankets, he knows it will just gain more attention. Or so he hopes. Logic is hard when he's pressed against another warm body. Thankfully, however, his father seems satisfied satisfied, and leaves soon after. Marin lets loose a heavy sigh and slumps forward, letting his forehead hit Chet Noir's shoulder. I'm sorry, she murmurs, and Marin can feel the quiet, apologetic hum resounding in her chest. I didn't mean to. Marin shakes his head and slips his arm around her waist, tugging her closer. I hope you're wearing pajamas. But, yeah, huh? Leather's hot, and it chaps after a while. Oh? Who says I'm staying? You're stuck until I stop having a heart attack. With a soft laugh and a flash, the texture material of Chat Noir's suit melts away into something much softer. And Marin hums in approval. Now sleep. <sighs> School tomorrow. The next day, Marin shows up with a pale pink scarf wrapped around securely, wrapped securely around his neck, despite the warm spring weather outside. He doesn't answer when questioned and waves it off as an attempt to fight off an un oncoming cold. However, at lunch, he nearly ruins the entire thing when a dream meets his gaze and slowly, but purposely, draw her hand up her thigh and promptly spills half of his drink down his front. 